Team for Tech up next. And your time. Oh wait. Well, this is 
our assumption that creates the values for shoppers and the buyers. But thank you. Thank you very much. We have a, a shop console so that each shop has a they can update from online and very easy. They just provide the prices and that's it. We maintain the product database. Any other questions? Well, I'm um, I'm from Japan and he's from uh, he's a media engineer and we have two business developers in the team. And I, I, sorry, I still work in. Uh, um, Online marketing firm in Japan, so I'm very aware of, of SEO and online marketing and those, those, those things. Are you starting with a particular type of product or not? Sure. Well, that's, uh, well, we want to make sure that some particular product is more attractive to people on online, like a mobile phone. People searching a lot of mobile phone information in Bangladesh. We already tested it. So we are only targeting, right now we are targeting on electricity. But we will move into the services like internet service provider, even a mobile phone or online banking accounts. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Can I have Appstar? Would you get your slides uploaded? Now. Hi, this is Masuda. I'm from Appstar. We have a very similar
and they have a huge amount of data that is spread throughout the organization in one million different Excel shares. Now, we have crossed 500 million, but we're not going to go to the next million based on that. And that is why the CEOs, especially the second generation who have come in to make decisions based on data, they're finding it difficult to find the status quo of the company. They don't know what the business status quo right now is, they don't know what is the financial situation right now, and even if what the market position they are in right now. So there is an absence of the linkage between data and good decisions. There is a lack of actionable data. And that is why next slide place, like this will come in. First of all, we provide the content, we provide the market data to them. On the secondary stage, we provide them analysis and advising of the internal data. And lastly, instead of communicating this to them in the form of reports or PDF, pages, we just give them into a dashboard that has their whole business on the go in your iPad or iPhone. And I'll just go through a specific case in point that we did for a particular company who is a large component based of 10 industries, and we are actually helping them move from 90% leverage to equity based financing based on data. Next slide, please. So what we have done so far, so we have 35 clients in a year, and includes them like Mitsubishi, International Hedge Funds, and Care. And right now, we are operating globally, but we want to go global with this product. The global market is valued at US 300 billion, as per import by McKinsey. The deal flow right now till then is around 75,000 US dollars, that is our revenue as of now. And the team, we have the experience in investment and corporate advisory with firms like CTH, HSBC, Dell, Stancy. And 50% of our revenue are coming right now from analysis and advisory, but we are going to move to the BA platform for more scalability in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Any questions? Judges. Uh, mainly for the market that I wanted, there are a lot of local competitors like Macy Nelson, G Marcos, Provening Market and as well. And for the global the BA platform, there are global firms like TCS who is providing similar platforms as well. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 
only after standing like you. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the first session. We ended four minutes later than our calculated time. But uh, uh, we're just going to take a quick two minute break. Uh, session two will start right away. So, can I get session two people get ready? Uh, um, judges, you guys need. Hey, we have some cookies. Yes, we have some cookies. Where are my cookies, man? I need some energy. Alright, can we get the cookies? Alright, let's get started. City scope. We're up next. Just wait the next day to start. I'm gonna get my phone. Good time. You're feeling nervous? Good. Fun train, that's what we like. Alright? Ready? Set? Go. Uh, good afternoon, respected judges and dear audience. I'm Omar from Team City School. And as you know, that Bangladesh is a developed country and power cuts and everything is quite common. It's hassleful as the demand increases twofold, but we have a supply of one fold or even less. So what do we do? We need to live with this problem. And we time is more valuable than money and we need to utilize it. So we can't waste time. So CityScope is there to help you. We notify you two to three hours ahead. What, uh, when the power cut is going to happen. So with that you can plan out your day and you could make the maximum utilization of your time. As you can see we would have the interactive map and which would have uh, on the website page applications and the Java based multimedia phones. You would press uh, on a section and you would see the timing and everything. And uh, this would be a premium based application uh, where the premium customers would get a notification like this and there would be ads. And there would be also call-based and SMS-based services as many users in our country don't have smartphones or multimedia phones. Uh, the power company does have a method of letting us know from where we're actually getting it free. So, but that is very clumsy. It's a 45 to 50 page PDF for each and every area, so it's very difficult to understand. So here, CityScope helps you so that by this interactive map, we could let you know. The potential market is very huge as there are about 18 million users of electricity of Desco in Dhaka City currently and about 50 million of them have phones. So either getting them on the smart smartphones or their regular phones, we could catch them and we could make it happen. Thank you very much. Uh, I would need, uh, yeah, I would need because uh, developing the app and all on the map base is pretty expensive, so we would need the investment. As currently we have our friend who's working on the prototype, but we would need more expert programmers, so we would need the investment as well. Any other questions? Is this a permanent problem, or is that infrastructure improvement uh, Yeah, as you, as I told you mentioned earlier, power is developing, so the demand increases too low, and the supply always there is a thousand, about thousand megawatts shortage of electricity. So next 10, 15 or 20 years, I don't see a deal without any change. So power with a power. So it's a good proposition. Any other questions? Alright. Thank you very much. So we thought we can solve this problem by using the mobile and the internet. 
Because as we as you see, we have 140 million of mobile users and 36.5 million among them are internet users. So we introduce a service in Lifeline which connects the blood donors and receivers directly. One step for a request of blood in Lifeline, it automatically generates a notification to the nearest 100 donors from your location, which means that you need blood and donors from your location nearest to you knows that you need blood. So they can respond to you. Let's say you need blood right now in right this place. So people of same blood group who are in, in near near from your location can come and give you blood. And our revenue generation model is basically uh, we we have introduced we are going to introduce lifeline on SMS and USSD and the notifications can be also sent over SMS. So that is basically our revenue generation model. Thank you. But they don't uh, give you donors for exactly on from your location, you know. What's that matter? That matters because on an average day uh, in Bangladesh, whenever you need blood in Dhaka Medical College, the uh, the topmost government hospital in Bangladesh, and uh, it connects with your donor from Uttara, it takes two hours on average to reach to that blood receiver, the donor to reach the blood receiver. Two hours is a long time, and in case of medical emergency. The black bank, the blood bank which actually stores the blood. We want to connect the blood donors with the receivers remotely. We don't want them to because you know in the blood banks the blood which they store they don't have the quality check and all those stuff. So that's a big problem for us. There are secret efficiency blood banks. Blood banks. Yeah. Getting more people to the bank. And what how is the incentive for the people to get this SMS? It's a social cause. People, uh, people would like like to save a life. Why won't you? Won't you want to be a hero by saving another's life? Well, why would they just go to the blood bank and they're interested in saving people? They want to go to a blood bank and donate blood, but they cannot see the impact. You see, in life, you can actually see the impact by saving a life. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We have pixelism. And your time starts now. Hello everyone, this is Uncle Naruto from Pixelizer and we are here with our smart home systems. So there are an increasing number of developer companies here in Bangladesh and there's a huge competition within them. And what our product is, can do is add values to their apartment so that people get attracted. So, our competition is to overcome the uses of traditional switching systems of the appliances by remote control and automatic controlling features. And we are already done with our some solutions like remote control through radio frequencies and from smartphones with solutions and from PC software. So we want to reach to our target market, especially the developer companies, and we can generate our revenues by incorporating our systems with their apartments when they sell their apartments to the customers. We already implemented our systems to one of our customers. I can show you a video. So here is uh, the control system from mobile application. And we are controlling two lights and one fan from the application. So that's all. Any questions? Which have a solution 
uh, attracts uh, people who are rich and wants to uh, who loves luxury and style. And the apartments which doesn't have isolation cannot attract those kind of people. But rich people actually uh, wants to spend money. They spend money. The price difference. Do you have an idea? Of the local apartment and price.
remove this culture to here. Let's see, uh, our customer segment is uh, online buyer, then super shows, then institution buyer, and as an well export in the worldwide. And we are expecting 1.2 billion US dollar on that end of the year. And this is our team, initial team. Apart from this team, we have uh, uh, our consultant and uh, experienced farmers. Let's see, uh, being a startup company, these countries are our competitor and locally, our competitor is the local supplier, producer, and bad workshop. And this, uh, we have started our journey in 2013 by developing the technology and uh, uh, we successfully uh, launch, soft launch and test, we are getting revenue from the online order. And my dream is to create an uh, integrated agro industry in this country which will serve, uh, produce a quality product for local and international people. And our business model is very simple. Uh, so it's water collection by uh, deliver and revenue. Thank you very much. In, in our own land, we have we have about sixty five acres own land in Malika. I mentioned we produce the product. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we uh, cannot produce, we collect from the uh, local uh, with farmers. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. One, two, three, play. Ready? Go. Have you ever thought of visualizing your imagination? Have you ever thought of developing your own game or your own apps, even though you don't have zero knowledge of coding? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have never thought like that, I'm sure you're going to thought, think about it after seeing this presentation. This is Mahmoud Akta representing 143 Play in Ginjin. And the tagline of 143 Play in Ginjin is 0% coding and 100% fun. So we are taking the burden to provide you with the experience of fun and gaming even though you don't have any knowledge of software development or coding. If we look at the global market, then you can see that by 2016, it's going to be 86.1 billion dollar market. So it's actually huge. It's not huge, it's huge. And considering that scenario, we are targeting the apps users and game players, the game developers, professional game developers, and also the tech savvy people who would love to design games or apps for casual purposes. So for example, uh, I could show this presentation using uh, games and apps, uh, I mean, using an animation and visual effect. Um, and considering the competitors who are already uh, providing these uh, experiences or providing these products, the most important advantages that we have is we are providing native app support. And this is a single platform where you can both play and you can create games. And we have an excellent team of academics and IT experts who are working for this engine. And we can provide you with all these experiences, usually free. But if you want to upgrade your experience, then we can buy a premium version. And we can provide you with a very affordable cost. And that's going to be the main source of our revenue generation. Uh, and, but apart from that, we are also planning to sell virtual products and casino. The idea of casino came from the most popular game in 29 per game. That's actually our most recent game. And these are some of the games. Thank you, that's all for one to you play. Any questions? <laughs> Thor, <laughs> So how big of a problem is this? How many people want to make games? Sorry? How big of a problem are you solving? How many people are there want to make games? Uh, as I told you, the market is boosting, so there are lots of game developers that are upcoming. So I'm sure they're going to be benefited from them, uh, from this act. Uh, I told you that it's not for the game developers only, it's also for the other people who love to play game. So uh, the number of gamers is also increasing with the industry. So uh, uh, they're the targeted audience. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Next, we have Bitbucket, and your time starts now. Imagine a world where autistic children can achieve much more than what they are right now just by having the right access to an effective education system. Because just alone in Bangladesh, one in five million children are affected by autism. In the US, it's two million, and globally, the rate is just increasing. But no fear, because Buck Engineers is here. And we are a subscription based, uh, we're a subscription based software solution to develop educational games and applications for, um, to develop cognitive and communication skills of specific autistic children. Our product, our product model is as such where the developers can build specific apps according to the needs and put it into the system from which guardians and therapists can have access to predefined buckets with bucket A and B and create their custom buckets in the Fatima's bucket according to the needs. It has been validated the progress by various US and Canada based researchers and we're already talking to an organization in Bangladesh who are willing to acquire the solution. Our revenue model is based on the subscriptions and um, app purchases from the organization and by the parents. Our target is to, by the second year, we want to target five social organizations and education institutions, and by the third, it's going to be 20. So my call for action is to the angel investors to invest into me for $200,000 for two years, because after two years, once we're done with the product development and pilot studies, we're going to break into revenue. So partner with us because we believe in innovation to cause a revolution. Thank you. Judges, questions? Um, there are various applications available on the App Store and on the Google Store, um, which have been validated by various researchers in, in the US and in the Canada, right? And uh, so we are trying to like develop those kind of applications over here in Bangladesh, in the Bangladeshi context. And the organization that we have already spoken to, they have shown interest in acquiring the solution from us. Any other questions? Um, just a follow-up question. So, sure. So if, if uh, there are modern installations out there, like you mentioned, it doesn't test it, so why? Um, the unique thing about this is that uh, the process through which the recommendations are, are going to be given to the children by the therapist and by the educators, the selection of the applications and the tools which is going to come with Buckets Engineer, that's the uniqueness. And the evaluation system basically, how we track the progress of these aged children, is what makes us different from what is being done outside. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. After air and water, our basic necessity is food. With the project of 9 billion population by 2050, we uh, require a food increase by 70%, where our current load is 41%. Besides this, energy cost is increasing and arable land is decreasing day by day. So, we can't feed a billion people today. How can we feed? Uh, a lot of people by 2050. Do you have a solution to this? Yes. Smartic has the solution to this. Two thirds of the world's uh, food coming from the developing countries using sensorless technology, collecting field information. We are providing German farming solution to the farmers so that they can increase their yield by 8% and uh, other uh, minimization of the cost. Again, uh, uh, we have a revenue model here. Uh, we have a contractor as a mediator working here. Uh, we are gonna, uh, the farmers are gonna pay 2.5 dollar per month, uh, and uh, we are gonna give a rather 1.75 dollar to the contractor as a uh, commission. So uh, we have an implementation plan of uh, we have an implementation plan where we are gonna start our pilot project from the first June. We have already developed our prototype. We have a financial projection and at the year of five we are going to make 12.6 million US dollar uh, as a gross profit. So it's a huge amount. So we are, uh, we are targeting now initially 50,000 farmers in the region and uh, the current, uh, there are some government, NGOs and private sector who, are, who can be our competitors but they are not real time. And 
and not personalized. We are here unique. So we are smart and we, are, uh, we need a hundred K US dollar as an Asian investment. Thank you. Small scale farmers in developing countries. And initially, uh, we are targeting 50,000 farmers in the region of Bangladesh. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Picture says 1,000 words, so I'm guessing the video should say more.
Remember at the end of the day, this isn't about winning. This is about like market exposure and publicity. Because it's going to open up doors. And I will give you guys one example. Last night, you know, being up on 5.30 a.m. in the morning, and still, I took one of our speakers up uh, to show you know, what's going on. And I find out that during Startup Batch, which was in November, one of the companies that pitched got actual funding from an investor that had attended that event. That is something really, really big. So I'm not sure. And this to me, I found, found out just last night, and which is, what, after seven to eight months? And that's fantastic news. And he told me, is that if we hadn't invited him there, and those guys had not pitched there, they would have never met them. And they got a very big size of the On top of that, they got a, 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 a large existing business who came on as an investor in that business. So, it's not always about who won. And I'm sure no, no one won in that. So that's what I'm trying to say is that this is not about winning or losing or anything. It's about publicity, it's about exposure and meeting people and making sure you can get the maximum up. I think today's mentor session, we had someone um, tell us that they wanted to buy their product or invest in their product just from today's session, uh, one of the mentors. So the idea is that you know matchmaking that we're trying to do. So I hope that every single one of you guys got the contact information of your mentor and you should do a follow-up email as we spoke about yesterday so that you can keep in touch and actually ask them, hey, can you forward to someone else? Because they have that mindset that we've also helped them create, you know, of helping people and you know, partnering and moving it forward. Alright? So, uh, the judges will be coming up soon and you guys can go grab a coffee, find me, okay? So, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your patience, guys. You know, the North End Coffee guys are great. They closed it, but those guys came back because of this and because of you guys. They're excited to supply you guys with caffeine. All right? It's not good.
to course correct. So one of my first businesses uh, was a, uh, my friend, uh, his grandfather made a, a table, like a pool table, a small pool table, but instead of pool, it was croquet. You know how you play croquet? Uh -huh. With little wickets and little mallets, balls, and we used to have tournaments on campus. And everybody came to play, they loved it, and everybody said they were going to buy one. And even Playboy magazine, they heard about it, and they said, if we put that in our magazine, you have to have 25,000 of them ready to sell. To sell. So you have to have a warehouse full of them. And then another, Temmaker Schlemmer, and a couple of other catalogs said, but you have to have so many. So we made 50,000 of them. And they didn't sell. <laughs> That year, toys came out with chips, so they were moving and talking toys. That's what sold that year, not uh, interactive toys. They didn't sell, but it was a great game. We had hundreds of them. If you want one, I'll send you one. It just flat and failed, but that's all right. We went through everything to make that happen and learned a hundred things about business. So it wasn't a failure in the end, it just didn't sell. Everybody who stood up here in front of everybody and had two minutes to make their point, you win. It Did you takes, win? Yeah. Did you win? I should have. <laughs> I should have. So just want to say that everything is feedback. Everybody wins as long as you take the feedback. And then coming down to choosing who won out of everybody was very difficult. Uh, uh, but we had to choose seven people. And we chose them. Don't feel that you lost if you weren't chosen in the top seven. If I'm getting feedback to get better the next time. That's my message. Are you ready? Yes. So one of the jobs I have at, at George Washington University is to run our business plan competition. It's actually one of the biggest in the United States. We give out over $100,000 in, in um, cash prizes and, and a bunch of in-kind prizes. Um, so we had a lot of great participation. But I have to say, I didn't know what to expect when I was first coming here to Bangladesh. I said, you, you guys have done an awesome job. I'm really impressed with the energy, the ideas, and the presentations uh, that you did all did today. Um, I will say also as well, I've been involved in lots of business plan competitions. Um, we have to select the winners, as Jim was saying, um, but the ones who don't win, that doesn't mean that your ideas aren't just as good. Maybe you didn't present them as well today. Maybe you still haven't figured it out. Um, a lot of the ones who don't win in the competitions that I've been to have been at later on become the big winners. So you know, don't think about this being winners and losers. You're all, by participating in this process, learning a lot and getting through the experience. So I want to applaud all of you for so, I think thanks for showing up, and all that has been said enough. No winners, no losers, great. But all of that almost doesn't matter because we're not here for that. We're not here for who's going to win or who's going to not win. We're here as a start of building an ecosystem. What that really means is everybody else next to you, for the next, or for the foreseeable future, this is what you continue doing. You're going to learn a lot together, you're going to struggle a lot together, you're going to succeed a lot together, and that's what's important. You're going to support each other, you're going to reach out to others, and you're going to rely on each other to be successful. There's no winners or losers, necessarily. Some will be more successful than others. Some will give up on the process of this sort of entrepreneurial journey, which is tough, which is full of, of failure, full of hardship, full of all these other things, and I can't overstate that. Um, but if you have, and it sounds funny, but if you have each other, if you have other people around you that understand the process you're going through, that is absolutely <laughs> critical to the success of the document system overall. And then we also have, through organizations like this, through organizations like what we're putting out here, are other ecosystems you can tap into for lessons of how we can provide support, what we need to do, and how we can encourage others to be involved. 
So one of the takeaways from this that I hope all of you take with you is it's very important to get other people outside of entrepreneurship involved in the whole process. Getting them acclimated to the language of how you, of what seed funding is, of what angel investing is. So they have people, just as one example, that have money, that normally wouldn't consider investing in a startup. So they instead open another restaurant, open another factory, or whatever a traditional investment would be for them. Simply by you talking to them about it will help the next person that pitches and the next person that pitches after that. So please take the lessons you learn here and apply them way broader than just the context of a pitch and way broader than the context of just the one business idea that you're exploring here. And rather take it as more of a, a way to build an ecosystem around it. Because that's really what we're all trying to do. All right, thanks a lot, Phil. Okay, we're gonna first get everyone a certificate, so just bear with us and tell you. Uh, can I get Amanda to come up as well? Who's the piece? Amanda, over here. Amanda. 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 Uh, all right, can we get the first team, Amadur Cloud, Elizabeth. Camera, Wasi, pictures please. Oh, yeah, that. Like us. 
the partners? And 
singularity. To give a second. Oops, sorry. So, congratulations, everyone. If you can stay, yes, thank you all for participating. If you can stay for five minutes, I'll give you feedback from, uh, from judges so you can prepare better tomorrow. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you tomorrow. Everyone will be uh, demoing their products at the demo day tomorrow. Yeah. Just, just wait. Um, again, thanks to all our sponsors, State Department, CRD of Global, Startup Paca, and then Citibank, LR Global, Popular Life, AISD, Instar, Amra, Magneto, Canva Author Group, Orchid Printers, our media partners, Radio Shalim, Independent, Taka Tribune, and Iktabak. Outreach partners, Basis, Brand Forum, ESAB, JCI, GBG, GDG, BBD, Printer Lab, Elance, World Bank, and The Way. So, thank you so much, everyone. And, and I always say, if you guys weren't here, we'd be talking to ourselves. So, thank you for participating in this group camp. We're very, very happy. Look forward to the showcase tomorrow. Please show up at the Western Hotel at 1 o'clock so we can get you set up and get you some exposure, some deals, and maybe some investment too. Who knows? Thank you so much. Robert